enjoying life with a sense of fulfillment. It's not everybody that has a sense of fulfillment. You see, just having a sense of fulfillment alone gives you joy, make you to be at peace. Then you enjoy your life. But if you read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, you realize that you are meant to enjoy life. But those who enjoy life to the fullest are people who are fulfilling purpose. There are other people that enjoy life. Don't be deceived. Though. If you have some money, you enjoy life. Some of us, you sit down with the TV, you'll be watching the match live. Some people, they already have itinerary. They buy tickets. They go there live. They'll be looking at Messi like this, physically, as you are to be like this. They don't just enter stadium. They stay in VIPs, and they're not born again. In between, after, when you are arguing, they go into VIP lounge and sip tea, take wine, and take chicken, champagne, and they are smiling, and they are enjoying themselves. And while they are doing that, they are still seeing what is happening on the field. And they don't have Christ. But I said with a sense of fulfillment. That's the difference. You are enjoying life with a sense of fulfillment. Fulfillment. They still have a vacuum in their heart in a way that should be filled. But you already have those vacuums filled. You're having a sense of fulfillment. It could be after a long walk that you travel to the field. Do you know that there are people whose team is being beaten and they're still enjoying life? You, your team is being beaten. You have not been really enjoying life and your team is now being beaten again. The thing is now painful. There are men that are angry with their wife for not supporting their club. He will be transferring aggression. I am on the lost side. The lost side is a winning side. Anytime you lose, I'm not on your side. I'm not your fan. I can't be fan to losses. Amen? Amen. Enjoying life with a sense of fulfillment. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. He said, we will live the good life which he already prearranged for us. If he prearranged and predetermined our life of purpose, he prearranged and predetermined the path we should walk in, then he already predetermined and prearranged the good life we will live. God is not a tax master. He's a pay master. You can't obey him and not live a good life. You can't walk in the light of his will at the center of his purpose for your life and not live a blossoming life. It might not be happening immediately. Probably you are facing one challenge or the other. But as you continue to enforce his will on the earth and align with him, it will eventually take place. And once you enter that realm, you have entered. It can only get better. Somebody say it can only get better. <laughs> Lift up your right and say, for me, living a good life, I have entered that realm. And it's getting better. It can only get better. Say better and better. From glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? In Christ, it's difficult to be poor if you are made rich. You must have opened the door for demonic invasion for you to become poor. Do you know the Bible says the gifts of God are without repentance? God is too big to take back what he gives you. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm living a good life. Yeah, say a very good life. I'm living a good life. Yeah with a sense of fulfillment. Not that you have all the money. You don't have a sense of fulfillment. You have all the excellence. You have all the awards. You don't have a sense of fulfillment. You are popular. No sense of fulfillment. And you know there can't be sense of fulfillment without sense of purpose. A pursuit of purpose. Glory to God.